in looking at the title of this event and the, the background materials, it's a little daunting because I'm a long way from talking about global issues. But to do justice to you, I must speak about the things that I know and not waste your time with, with my thoughts on things I really know less about. So I want to talk about the one thing I think I know a fair bit about, which is a problem of, of food injustice in our country. By way of introduction, I'm a professor at the University of Toronto in Nutritional Sciences, and my primary research area is the area of food poverty. My work is completely within the Canadian context, so that is the, the, the lens that I bring to you today. We have now somewhere around 3 million Canadians who don't have enough to eat who on a day in and day out basis are compromising either the quality and or the quantity of their dietary intakes because of an inability to access appropriate food through normal channels. Around 3 million. How do I know that? Because we have national surveys now, it's become normal on Canadian population surveys to ask people questions about whether they have enough to eat. Since 1994, there have been questions on a whole variety of surveys that ask people questions like, you know, so if you were picked up for a stat scan survey, the first in 1994, asking people if their children ever went hungry because they didn't have food or money for food. Since 2004, we've been asking an 18-item instrument that ranges from a mild level of food insecurity, which is do you ever worry about running out of food and not having food for yourself and your family because you don't have food and you don't have money to buy food. That's the mildest level. The questionnaire moves down systematically. Do you find yourself not able to feed yourself or your children a balanced meal because you don't have money for food and you don't have food? And then it keeps going through those 18 items down to the very worst case, which is do you ever not eat for a whole day because you don't have food or money for food? And if yes, how many days? How many months in the last 12 months has that happened to you? Now, it might shock you to realize that those are routine questions now that StatScan has on its surveys. They're on the Canadian Community Health Survey and they're about to be run on the survey of household spending. They're there because people answer yes to those questions and we need to start to pay attention to that, that answer. Because these questions have been run since 1994 and since 2004, we've had a very comprehensive measure running now on 130,000 Canadians as part of routine surveys. We actually know a lot about the problem. It's a serious problem. Uh, it, it's an appalling problem when you think about Canada as an affluent nation with an abundance of food. Absolutely, there are problems with our food supply, and others will speak eloquently to that as this day goes on. But we have a profound issue of um, a problem of access, of access. Who are those three million people? Well, they're poor people. The, the way that most of us access food is through the market channels. An inability to do that reflects an, an, a, a, an inadequate purchasing power, right? So in our three million, what are we looking at? We're looking at people who are homeless, all of whom have profound issues of food access day in and day out. You heard a shocking statistic from Susan McDaniel last night about um, the life expectancy of someone who's homeless. Mm -hmm. We also have a huge problem of food insecurity amongst Aboriginal populations. When surveys have been run on discrete groups on reserves or in, in northern communities, the prevalence of food insecurity is upwards of 70%. We also have an appalling problem of food insecurity amongst people on welfare. If you think about welfare, it's our income support program of last resort. People turn to welfare when they have nothing left. And we have spent a huge amount of um, intellectual resources figuring out how to make absolutely certain that they only get welfare when they have absolutely nothing left, right? There's a gigantic enterprise in place to make sure that's true, so that there are no assets in those households by the time they go on welfare. The single biggest risk factor for food insecurity in this country, second to Aboriginal status, is being on welfare. Over half of people on welfare in Canada are food insecure. But that's by design. Because we have, uh, we have our income support program that we taxpayers um, fund um, that is designed in a way that does not provide enough money for people to make ends meet. In Ontario, Something like 66% of people who are on welfare at any point in time will report problems of food access because they don't have enough money to pay the rent and, and to buy food. So I've told you about Aboriginal Canadians and people on welfare. The third um, thing that I need to say about this problem 
is that while those groups are at very high risk, the three million are mostly comprised of people who are working. Over half of food insecure individuals in Canada are people who are not on welfare, they're tapped into the labor force. How come they're food insecure? Well, because they're not making enough money through the labor force. Their attachment to the labor force is limited, perhaps to part-time casual employment. And the wages they're able to garner through low-wage jobs are insufficient to cover costs of rent and, and um, food. Again, it speaks to a social problem in terms of policy, because what it says is not that our um, minimum wages should be so high as to support a family of five, but that our income transfer programs that are meant to level things off and keep people in the workforce are insufficient. So I share this with you through the lens of Stats Canada surveys because I think it's very important for us to move away from the more public um, persona of this problem, which is food banks. Food banks seem only issue in the public light. Recently this week we saw another report on um, the hunger count. Mm -hmm. Food banks only issue in the public domain, rightly, because they are the primary response to, to food insecurity in our country. They have been they were the first response and they are still, still the biggest single thing that anybody in Canada is doing about this problem. But that's a big problem in itself. Because by any objective indicator, fewer than a quarter of people who are food insecure actually go to food banks. And the research that we and others have done suggests that those who go to food banks are no better off than those who don't. Um, why? Because that system is donor driven, it is absolutely incapable of solving this problem. And I'm not saying anything that people operating food banks wouldn't tell you. They themselves know that they are way over their heads. But unfortunately, the um, association between hunger and food charity in our country has given the illusion um, that the problem is being solved. So if you are concerned about hunger, what you do, you give to a food bank. And you're constantly encouraged to do that, but the illusion then is left that now the problem is okay. And yes, it's too bad people have to use food banks, but they've been fed. No, they haven't. The problem is much, much bigger than that. It's not a food systems problem, I don't think. I think it's a problem of economic and social injustice, but it's, it's a problem that requires um, social policy responses that will only come from people like us rearing up on our hind legs and saying this is unacceptable. We have to do that because this problem is getting worse. There is absolutely no indication that it is on the public um, policy um, front in, in any way. So it's important for us to, to add it to the mix of discussions about food justice today. I realize that it's a little off center in that I'm not talking about a food problem, I'm talking about a problem of poverty. But we see it day in and day out through, the, through a food lens. For us to envisage a better food system, it's wrong for us to do that without, without envisaging a food system that all can access. Thank you. Thank you very much, Valerie. Valerie is a professor at the University of Toronto in the Department of Nutritional Sciences. Her research interest is in the study of social and economic determinants of health and nutrition. Much of her work focuses on problems of domestic food insecurity, considering their origins and nutrition implications, and examining current policy and program responses. Parallel to this focus on food security is her ongoing interest in Canadian food policy and population-level nutritional assessment. Her recent research projects have included an ethnographic study of frontline work in food banks, a study of nutritional vulnerability and food insecurity among women and families using food banks in Toronto and an examination of social assistance benefit levels in relation to costs of basic needs. Her current research initiatives include a study of food access, nutritional vulnerability, and social exclusion among homeless youth in Toronto, a study to examine local responses to the food and nutrition needs of homeless groups, and an analysis of Statistics Canada's food expenditure data, to elucidate the interrelationships between social, economic, and regional factors and food consumption patterns within different population subgroups.